<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Monkey Barrel Comedy Chat Show. It's the only official podcast of Monkey Barrel Comedy, one of the most famous comedy clubs in the world. And every week we interview a guest visiting us here at our venue in Edinburgh. And this week it's the wonderful Josh Weller. Ooh. Thanks oh. for having me. There was one little, <laughs> one little sound from you and our wonderful wizard behind the podcast. Uh, so, uh, Josh, uh, what should we talk about? I mean... There's so much to talk about. You've been on uh, ITV's stand-up sketch show. Uh, you were recently, you were the support act for uh, Fred Armisen, yeah. the wonderful, uh, fantastic comedian, sketch uh, comedian. Uh, a big part of your story, I guess, is that you you were originally uh, quite a, a successful musician, I believe. I think successful's okay. Uh, mildly overstating it. <laughs> I tried to be a successful musician. Yeah? yeah. How, how far along did you get? As good as you can get when you're quite bad. Oh, like it, it went really well for how bad my music was. Were you surprised by how far you could get with it? Yeah. I, no, it, in the back of my mind, I was like, this is never going to work. <laughs> so when you look back, do you think someone should have stopped me? <laughs> Somebody should have came up and yeah, said. Yeah, but so many people did. <laughs> so, many people, <laughs> so many people were really nice and were like, yeah, yeah maybe you should think about trying something else. Yeah. So did you, were you in your head processing it like... Oh, they're just jealous. They're just jealous no, of my skills. Th- when my parents stopped saying you should get a real job, and when they were like, "Look, as long as you're happy," and I was like, <laughs> "Fuck, I've, that it's over." Yeah, you know, that's very much like you're gonna do what you're gonna do. Yeah, we go given and do up. it. Uh, so the band, the band name was the Kenneths. Yeah. So I was a solo artist first. Yeah. So I moved to London to like be a star when I was like when I was nineteen. Oh wow! And then I did get I got signed to Universal. Uh, when I was 23, but I also got dropped by Universal when I was 23. So oh, it was that's, like, so that's was, a quick turnover. It was, they realized pretty quick. Yeah. If you had continued on and been a huge musician, that would have been such a plot point that one it, year. I know. It, where Universal made a huge mistake. They gave me a lot of money, <laughs> which I spent very quickly. Very good. I bet. I bet. Because at that point, also, you're 23, you think, I guess money's just limitless. These opportunities I, never yeah. end. Because when you're 23 and you get given, I got given 60 grand. Oh, my God. By Universal. Wow. Which just went into my current account. Oh, really? So I was like, I, and at 23, I was like, well, I guess I make 60 grand a year now. But then I didn't get any more money for a decade. <laughs> oh, so really, gosh. I made six grand a year. Yeah. When you, oh, when you break but, it down like that, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. It but, was. Do you remember where you were when you saw it go into your, like, did it pop up in your phone that it had gone into your it account? It was pre, or? I think it was pre-apps. So it's probably on your computer. I went to the cash point in Greenwich. Oh, right. Where I lived in between Greenwich and uh, North Greenwich. Yeah. Um, didn't need to say that. And um, <laughs> and I went to the, yeah, I went to the ATM to look at it. Yeah. And I took a picture of, of it with my Blackberry. That's how long ago it was. This story feels so filled with specific yeah, like, yeah. 90s, it was, uh, 2000s stuff there. It was a mad time, man. Noah and the world were huge. <laughs> <laughs> that must have felt amazing, though, looking at that. And I know that that feeling of like, I guess this is just, it's just this amount of money or more every year for the rest of my life. Yeah. You don't realize. And then we spent a lot of it on, we got this big producer in to make the record. I didn't know. So there's two types of deals you get as a musician. You get a record deal and a publishing deal. Okay. And a publishing deal is like, basically a recording deal is like they own your recordings. Yeah. So like if you record a song, yeah. someone owns that recording. If you sing Adele's song, Adele owns any money that you make. Of course, yeah. yeah from yeah. the song. And that's publishing. It's like owning the song. So I got a publishing deal. I didn't know you're not meant to spend that money on living. That's meant, sorry, that's, that money is meant to be for you to live on. Mm. And the record deal is meant to pay for the album. But we paid for the album with the publishing deal. So I immediately spent like 30 grand of it. Yeah, instantly. Instantly on this producer. Oh, wow. And I bought a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> <laughs> How long did the Mercedes oh, Benz last? I had so many you? tickets. I got so really? many fucking tickets. <laughs> wow. So you literally bought a way to lose more money. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I, but, I, but also at the same time, it feels like you got an entire kind of musician's career just broken into one year. Yeah, and then that didn't work. And then I started the punk band. So okay. that's sort of... And I started the punk band being like, hey, well, I'll do... You know, so many people change their names and mm-hmm. start another thing. And then they're successful. Like the vaccines, he was in another thing. Yeah. And then um, like most bands will like, they'll have a failed career and then they rebrand. Of course. So I was like, I'll just do that. But that also 
failed. Mm. <laughs> so that like one. even the Beatles had that fifth guy that they kicked out. Exactly. And they were hugely popular. And that guy's got to feel so bad. Yeah, I often wonder life. about Ringo, like the guy that replaced... Because the story is, is that the Beatles opened for, I think, someone called Something in the Hurricanes. I mm. can't remember the name of it. And then the drummer was Ringo. And yeah. the Beatles were like, that's the guy. Yeah. And then they just kicked out... The other guy. But it, that's the thing, is it never would have worked with the with other drummer. Because yeah. it was the chemistry of the four of them. But I'll tell you someone who doesn't agree. That guy. That, I bet guy. that guy thinks, oh, oh we could God. have been incredible. It's like Nirvana's first drummer. Yeah. That must hurt. That must hurt. Yeah. Especially considering how incredibly nice Dave Grohl is. Yeah. <laughs> like all you hear. Imagine you hate a guy who took your life away and... All people can say is, yeah, that guy's so nice. It's like the world's uncle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great clip of him I saw recently where he was signing autographs for people. And people were still, there was just so many. He signed so many. And somebody was like, come on, you got to do more. And he goes, here's the thing. Oh, bye. Yeah, and, and then he just, just ran off. off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's perfect. That's, how can you hate that guy? That guy's so nice. Uh, what was, I, I would love to know, like, what, what was like the big show? Like, I, I guess you're doing all of these performances, either either solo or as, as part of the Kenneths. What was the show that you think was the epitome, the biggest one for you? Um, I think the Kenneths had more fun mm. doing gigs. And we were with more people. So it's, yeah, it feels and like that it's was a shared thing. Yeah, it was fun. And then they, the, both of the members of the Kenneths have gone on to like really good stuff as well. That's so good. The, Aisha, the drummer, is now drumming for Hans Zimmer. Wow. And then, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, have you heard of him? Yeah, we heard of, we heard of Hans Zimmer. <laughs> yeah. You, every major movie for the last 20 years? Yes, yes. Yeah, and then Lewis, um, the bass player, he's in the band called Dry Cleaning. Okay. Who are also, they're nominated for a Grammy, which is tonight with the wow. night of this recording. Uh, this is incredible. So the only thing holding them back from when this success... Is, when this is edited, just in case they've won, we'll just yes. pop it up on screen <laughs> whether they won or not. I sent him a text saying congrats, and he was like, it's just for artwork. And I was like, which one of us has a Grammy nomination right now? It's not, because it's not me. Wow. But yeah, the only person holding them back from succeeding was me. <laughs> yeah. you, were the, you were the drummer in the Beatles yeah. that got rid of Faringo. Wow. I was the drummer on Bleach. Really? I mean, the fact that he works for Hans Zimmer, that the, the, he's the guy that does the bong from every trailer, <laughs> probably. Yeah. That's incredible. Um, was, was there any, like, big bands that you would have supported? We supported loads, yeah. Like, Descendants, mm -hmm. who are, like, one of my favorite. I have a Descendants tattoo. I'm fucking really? I'm wearing a Descendants jumper. Perfect. <laughs> and, um... I mean, this is good. This is very yeah, professional is, for podcasts to yeah, come yeah. and like, I have everything here and yeah. it's timed perfectly to the Grammys tonight. This is great. This is super pro. <laughs> yeah, we did. So we we worked with Bill Stevenson from the Kenneths, who was like, sorry, from the Descendants, who mm -hmm. was like uh, one of my punk heroes. We opened for The Offspring um, and Juliette Lewis. Wow. And did we do Green Day? Did we do? No. I mean, even the fact that you can ask that question yeah. is very impressive. You're like, did um, we do Green Day? But the biggest gig was, I think the Warp Tour was like the big punk thing that you can do. Oh, of course. You so did that was, yeah, That's yeah, amazing. That was mad. And then. We and did, amazing to meet someone that you've looked up to on, you know, a similar -ish level. Like you're coming, you're both doing the same thing. Yeah. That's got to be incredible. Although we, when we opened for the offspring, we, we weren't allowed on stage with them. With them. Like, like we weren't allowed to off. watch from the stage. Because oh. they're so deep. And I don't begrudge them it. I was mm. obviously gutted at the time. Of course. But like, they're like 50, 60. Yeah. And it just, it's just their fucking job. Uh, yeah, I can imagine someone just being like, can you just not? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as comedians, we've all been out like you're having fun with friends during the day and you've got a show that night and they go, oh, well, come along and watch it. And you go, can you just not? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you stay in this bar and I'll go do the gig and come back. <laughs> and that feels yeah, it's exactly like that. a more conducive thing yeah, to the Yeah, it's like evening. if your dad wants to come <laughs> to the show and you're like, can you, I just want to do it and go home. Can we not make it an event? Yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine like for anyone out there who isn't a comedian watching that, you know, you just, you got to go do your Sunday part-time job and someone's like, oh, hang out there. Please don't. Yeah. Please don't. <laughs> Because you'll be thinking and asking me questions about my job. I just want to get it done. I want to have fun, but I, I don't want to think about it. Um, wow, that's 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 really cool. I, I mean, I can also understand as well with the offspring not wanting people on stage. There's a reason. There's some previous band story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Somebody did something where they're like, you just can't be on stage yeah, anymore. Some support band took like silly string. Yeah. And it was and it got in all the gear. <laughs> And some tech. That's so quaint yeah. for a pop punk band or a punk rock band just to be like, so who's who's eating these chia seeds everywhere? They're all over everything. This is so annoying. 
Um, I like I like the idea of a punk band being like, yeah, we're we're up for anything, but please be clean up after yourselves. All right, it was, Come yeah, on. that was. Uh, what was the other big? We did the Royal Albert Hall. That was probably the biggest wow. gig we did. But a lot of people walked out. That's my main memory of yeah playing the Royal Albert Hall. Was like watching about three hundred people leave. Wow, was it? Was there a reason? Was it just because we were quite bad? <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> Because if okay. you're good, you generally watch. Well, they could have been going to get other people. They were like, like yeah, that's this. so sweet. Yeah, the 300 people were like, to get, oh my God, we've got to pull people in from outside. You didn't see it because you were on stage, but they all ran outside like in Back to the Future. And they're like, hey, yeah. Jeremy, <laughs> it's Jeremy your Punk. cousin. It's your cousin. Punk um, fan, come in, see this. Yeah, that was, that was the, I think that was the biggest gig that we did. Did. We did like Kentish Town Forum and, you know, mm-hmm. we did we did like big venues, but it was always opening for other for bands. kind of touring acts, which yeah. is kind of usually the thing. Uh, yeah. Um, like uh, I, my, my friends in a band in Ireland called called Fan Club. And there's so like little kind of room to, to go in Ireland for supporting bands <laughs> that like this. Eventually, he just ended up supporting Metallica at Slane Castle, which was like this the, their biggest concert they'd done in like 20 years in Europe. But it was just because, like, well, we've just done all these ones, so we're just next in line for that spot to to go do that. There's not a... Are they a metal band? uh, uh, Yeah, kind of metal, kind of pop. I'd say pop punk, kind of. Oh, wow. That's fucking furious at me. No, it was like pop pop metal, I'd say. Mm, Okay. Uh, They were once called the Radio Friendlies, and they had to change their name because it turned out somebody already owned that name. So they had to change it to Fang Club, which... uh, yeah, they, 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 it, was, it was insane because I met him working in a music shop when we were teenagers. And he was like, oh, I'd like to be in a band. And I was like, I'd like to be a comedian. And then I think we met up a couple of years ago and we're just like, that's yeah, fine. We're doing <laughs> we're it. both doing it. But yeah. It's, it's know, amazing how little you get paid for those big yeah. gigs as well. Oh, of course. Like, that's the number one thing he yeah, said. Like, like, I, they probably got 500 quid to open for Metallica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Uh, I think they went on tour with, my Chemical Romance at one point, and I was like, "Wow, you really, you really ticked off all the boxes for all of the bands he liked." But uh, he's kind of like, ah, "I've done it now. I did it." The pandemic came along, shut everything down. They haven't yeah. really started back up again, do music. But I did um, the uh, oh, fuck. Who were we opening for? When we did the Royal Albert Hall, we got one hundred and fifty quid. Wow! I, mean, oh I remember we. I opened for the Stereophonics on tour once, and someone in Stereophonics fan came up to me and was like, "Oh man, you must be making so much money on this tour." And I was just thinking, we are losing so much money. Yeah. Um, it's funny how when you are in an audience, either watching comedy or music or anything like that, you think people are making so much money from these big events and shows. And then yeah. you find out, oh, wow, geez. Like, I remember the the, the first time I did a, a, a TV work and I was like, oh, I'm going to get so much money. And it was like a hundred. It was a hundred euro. So probably 90 pounds. And I was like, great, cool. I literally said no to a 200 euro gig to be on this TV show. And I was like, I'm losing money <laughs> by being on that show. Oh, man. Uh, insane. Uh, would, you, would you say there was a difference between like the green rooms for kind of rock stars and being in a rock band versus comedy green rooms? Thank you for changing that from rock star to being in a rock band. <laughs> yes, I felt, I felt like you were going to jump on it immediately. Yeah. Your <sighs> you're, you're, um, eyes were up. You were like, I see what you're doing. Just comedy is just a bit... N- the, uh, what's the difference? Touring is just depressing. It's really depressing. Yeah. As a musician, even more so, because you have so much gear to lug around mm-hmm. and you have to park it every night somewhere. Where you, and then you have to lug it into the... Yeah, and you just venue. pray your van's not going to get broken into while you sleep in like the shittest hotel. Um, and then you get paid about the same that a comic gets, but you obviously have to pay for van rental. Mm-hmm. There's more of you. Probably you driver. Food, yeah. driver, tour manager, sound man, all that stuff. So the, the big difference, I think green rooms are just less depressing as a comic because you f- don't feel like you're wasting your life. Yeah, everything you have as, as a comedian is usually on you. <laughs> yeah. It's on your coat. You've got it. If you have a car, it's probably parked right outside the comedy gig. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, I could imagine musicians being like, Someone go back and check in the van. <laughs> it's good in Europe. You get you, the, the the food in the the dress. Like I remember, we we were touring with Yellow Card. Do you remember them? Mm-hmm. I think Ocean I think, Avenue. Yeah, yeah. I if I, I could find you now. Yes, those guys. <laughs> and uh, I remember in the on the European dates, we were in like Cologne or something, and the uh, and I was like, is there a, like a, some food I can? Mm-hmm. Thinking that it would be like England, where it's like you get like ten warm lagers and a pack of ham. <laughs> Here's a sausage roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and uh, and they were like, oh yeah, it's game or pheasant, and I was, and I just was like, this is wild, wild. And it was like goose some nights, and it was like eating like a medieval king. Wow. And so it's some, in Europe, touring is a lot. You're treated more like a an actual. They, they kind of blend into the the theatricality of you're a rock star, yeah. even if you're on lower levels. Yeah, exactly. Which is nice. You kind of you, you want to feel that. Uh, you only ever get that in comedy. I feel with if you if you play one of the kind of comedy festivals. And yeah. you get to kind of act like excited because you get like a little pass and you get to go through. Whereas <laughs> usually comedy is just like, eh, it's just a bartender going, eh, okay, that's upstairs. It's upstairs. Back room, back room. That's where the comedy is. Yeah, I ha- I opened for, um, I, was, I did Leicester Square Theatre with Red Richardson a couple of weeks ago. And he was looking at his sticky pass and he was like, AAA. What does that stand? And he was trying to figure it out. And I got to have this like. I was like, um, I think you'll find that means accessible areas. Nice. And uh, I was like, that's because on the stickies when you're in a band, it's mm. like you get those everywhere. You get those to, yeah. so you can get Very rare in comedy that you get a sticky pass. Yeah, it's very rare you get passes at all. I've, yeah. I've, I've seen comedians uh, leave areas for artists and not being allowed to get back in until somebody else comes along with a pass and says, yep. We just don't know. We've never had to hold things. <laughs> Comedians have never had that. That's true. We just usually walk along like, don't I look sad? I'm the comedian. Yeah. Get me on stage. Uh, cool. Well, here's the thing that we like to do to, to kind of relax our guests is uh, a surprise twist. Everyone loves a surprise. So uh, our wonderful uh, wizard behind the scenes, uh, Ewan, has a, a photo that we've taken from your Instagram yeah. that we'd like to talk with you about and explain. I think we've... We've discussed, we've figured out a lot of this <laughs> before the podcast. We're like, what is this? What happened? Now we know. I'm assuming it's you on stage in the guests. Yeah, that's in, that's on the Warp Tour. Oh, wow. And I think that's a very creatively edited photo of, of the audience numbers. Yeah. Somebody's really got close to the I imagine the head. from that girl with the vest on the uh, left yeah. to the guy with the hat on the right, there is no one else. <laughs> in that audience so <laughs> that insane. could be oh they played to like 500 people i think we that's one two three four i think we played to 11 people yeah at that game. i really believe that was like a sold out show yeah and because your enthusiasm matches that of a sold out show it looks like you are like this is it and i'm wearing my own merch <laughs> as well every day one of us had to wear our own merch because we thought we'd sell more merch mm. if people could see us wearing it and also on that tour as well because warp tour is um the bands have, it's like a dog fight to sell merch. Like oh, it's, really? you think it's like a community of musicians and yeah. everyone's like in it together. <laughs> everyone. But every day your merch tent on this, on the Warp Tour was like uh, around your stage. Oh. Or if you get there late, they just fuck you off to like the, some other car park oh, and where you sell wow. much. So you want it to be like right opposite the stage. So every day all the bands would get up at like 6 a.m. Wow. And like fucking run their merch down on their trolley. So it's the to, stress of like, tourists running down to put towels on a, yeah, on a bench the, to sit in a pool yeah, the the beach towel. On the, yeah exactly that but with rock yeah <laughs> the more you tell me about the inside of rock music it sounds nothing like i imagined yeah it's really depressing it's um, a lot of just like uh, well, I, I, karen I, behavior does it say where that is oklahoma city i have no memory of that gig i just remember that tour being really hot because we were playing outside every day i fainted in chicago on mm. stage Wow. And the other thing... In, in the middle of a song or was it between songs? It was, I think it was straight after the gig. Wow. Okay. Because it was about 40 degrees. Fair play <clears throat> hanging on. Yeah, thanks. And I was so ripped after that tour yeah. as well. I bet. That was the most everything. like tonk yeah. I'd ever been. Because <laughs> I just... You weren't eating it. Because no offense. Actually, fuck it. But Americans, American food is horrible. Yeah. And so you it's can't... A lot. Yeah. And there was no... And there was no showers either. Oh, So we God. had something called a solar bag, mm-hmm. which is a plastic bag with a little uh, sort of like a tiny penis tap on the end of it. Okay. And you'd fill it up with water in any tap and then you'd uh, leave it hanging on the bus all day so it'd warm up. Yeah. And then right before the bus leaves, you'd stand there with a, like swim shorts on. Oh, my God. And have a shower. Oh, my God. But the bus exhaust fumes would be like caning <laughs> your face. Just so you were just as dirty as when you before you had the shower and then you'd uh and then we would sleep on the bus with there was 15 people on the bus wow and uh I just imagine 15 of those little weird bags just hanging on the bus oh no there was three most people didn't shower. oh wow <laughs> wow so i mean uh, even at this point when you're raising your arms like that 
it can it could just be to dry off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, could yeah, be yeah. just trying to dry off post a uh, oh, little tiny God. bag. I don't have that level of showmanship in me anymore. <laughs> that was. I think that's good. I think you did a warped th- that part of your life. I think you did the exact right part of your yeah, life. Yeah, you know I mean, it, it, early it, 20s, it never felt know. natural though. It, well, I always felt like I got to be a front man now. Yeah, and it was like it felt like acting more than. Like, I, I bet I bet that's how it feels for for everyone. Yeah, I bet probably, if you asked yeah. Mick Jagger. He's got that. He's yeah, got I don't that. think he wants to go out and... Yeah, what's that? he's got the, I've got that imposter syndrome. He's got that. <laughs> yeah, he's phoning it in at this point. And more power to him. How old of is course. he? 107? I think so. <laughs> I think it's coming up on 108 now. Yeah. Very close. Uh, yeah, he, there's pictures of him holding the, the queen when she was a baby. He's an old man. Touring. I didn't even want to come here. Yeah. Like touring is, I don't know how they do it at that age. But as a comedian now, this must feel so freeing that you've got no equipment. Oh my God. Nothing to bring. Yeah, just, just yourself and your thoughts. And a notepad. It's yeah. So good. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, that, mu- that must be much better. Uh, we also do have uh, questions. Great. That come from Instagram. So one of the questions uh, we want to ask is, what is the biggest difference between writing comedy and music? Uh, well, one music is a song, good, and comedy is a, is a joke, good. That's, and that's I, the biggest. That's probably the biggest. I said the exact same thing. Before yeah, when I read this, there question. are no there are no chords in my jokes. <laughs> yeah, and also a joke is a lot harder because you have to go, you have to get everything out. You can't, you can't be like, um, why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? To get to the other side? To get to the other side? And, like that's how every chorus is. You could just yeah. say it over and over. If it went like, uh, there's a Doug Stanhope joke when he goes, "They tried to make me go to rehab," and I said, "No, that should have been the end of the song." Mm. But she kept saying it. <laughs> so, do you do you think as well? Uh, you have the opportunity with music to play it again, and people will appreciate the rhythm. They'll <laughs> appreciate that. You can't really do that with a joke. A joke's a one and done kind yeah, of. Yeah, and also I get like I'm obsessed with stage banter as well. So I hosted a gig. Mm-hmm. Um, for a record label a couple of months ago and I was like, you know, comparing it mm-hmm. and I was bringing on bands and I was going to leave and I heard one of the artists stage banter and it was so bad that I was like, I have to watch the whole gig. And like, yeah. it was just, it was, and, and that's the big difference I think really between comedy and music is that if you do a joke that bombs, you can just go, well, anyway, here's a song and you can f- hide Move behind the on. song. Yeah. yeah. Comedy, you you, everything's exposed. You're naked. Yeah. You've got no opportunity. I've, I've seen so many musicians do a terrible joke and just go well okay <laughs> one yeah. two and just straight in which i mean even i don't even think you can do that the opposite way uh, i i know i can't I, i've never seen a musical comedian do a punchline yeah. that did not do anything and just go well, here's a song everybody <laughs> here's johnny cash's hurt it's about how i feel right now um so who would you say we have a wonderful question here from tom on instagram who would you say is your biggest comedy hero and who's your busy, uh, biggest musical hero oh wow and if they met would they get on now tom this is a great question oh my god this isn't what's the difference between comedy and music who wrote that last question <laughs> Part, part of this part of this um, is going to be me attacking people sending in questions from now on <laughs> that's a really difficult question okay really so is. i don't think i have a specific I, there's no mm-hmm. like biggest we're not going to hold you to this five years and also now. so many of my comedy heroes are just cancelled so I that's to, true to, yeah they are all villains now yeah bloody woody allen <laughs> Um, we could we could do a supercut here of you mentioning every I? single I mean one. I, I like my, the first comedian i loved was george carlin mm. and richard pryor yeah um, and if you haven't heard them, you should check them out because of course. they were, they were both quite good. Um, Billy Connolly, Robin Williams. Um, but I, uh, so let's imagine them as one band. Okay. Let's take them and imagine them just as a group. And then, would, and then music again, like I'm a big, I have like a, I like everything, not mm. everything, but I have across genres. Eclectic. So like, I, I love the Beastie Boys and the Descendants as much as I love like Cole Porter. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think uh, would would the Descendants. I think the Descendants. The Descendants came to one of my comedy shows. That really was fucking terrifying. Wow. So they played in London last year. They did the Kentish Town Forum, and the night before, M- uh, Milo the singer and Bill the drummer came to, and I did two North Down, and they came, and that was fucking terrifying. Yeah, of course, because you're they're seeing this 
completely different version of you yeah. than they saw before. And they were my heroes when I was 10. And then they were in the audience. It was ho- It was amazing, but it was scary. Of I was like, course. if I bomb, this is going to live with me forever. Yeah. And, and, you know, as comedians, a bomb show can just come out of nowhere sometimes. Yeah, exactly. It, there's no way to tell. You can just be like, oh, well, I don't know why that happened. Yeah. Uh, okay, so would the Descendants get along with... Um, George Carlin. Yeah, I mean, they probably love him. I think so. Yeah. I, actually, Bill Stevenson from The Descendants is a big Cole Porter fan. Mm. So they'd probably get along great. Well, seeing as how The Descendants have seen you, uh, can we think of any comedy heroes who have seen you perform? Fred, Ar- Fred Armisen's probably the, yeah, the, so the main one. Yeah, so we can think of, one, yeah. would Fred Armisen... And the descendants get on. I think they would. Yeah, he talked about he talks about the descendants in his show. Well, there you go. He does like a whole <laughs> montage of punk drumming, and he mentioned the descendants in that. That's that's yeah, perfect. So probably, yeah. So all right, we we were quite uh, befuddled at this, but now we've come to the perfect answer, which is yeah, yeah they are one hundred percent would. And, and I te- te- I text both. Bill saying, "Hey, Fred Armisen's talking about you in his show," and he just replied, being like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm a punk icon. Like, of course he is. Do you think that was just for you though? He was like, "I'm gonna text back." Like he got the rest <laughs> and was like, ooh, running around the house screaming, but then takes yeah, back, no, cool. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, another question that we have. Now, this is more specifically for you because okay. we, we, we are aware that you're a big fan of Formula One. Mm. So here's a question. D- to do uh, with Lewis Hamilton. We're going we're gonna to let you and ask this because you're also a big <laughs> Formula One fan. I am indeed. Okay. So, yeah, it's about Lewis Hamilton. Is it about his yeah, move to Ferrari? It is indeed. Okay. So how do you think Lewis Hamilton will look in red and his Ferrari finally back on the path to glory um no <laughs> agreed no that they can't be nope they, do you think they are you a big f1 fan i'm a very big f1 so fan. okay so i went to the i went to in italy i went on holiday to italy after edinburgh festival um last year mm-hmm. and um my we were four hours away from the Magello ferrari museum yeah oh and i told my girlfriend it was an hour and a half okay just so she'd get in the car <laughs> and, and she was so and rightfully so she was furious furious when we got there yeah well at what point did you get an hour and a half into the trip and i had to say i had the phone like that she was like why didn't you and i was like it's fine i can see it better (laughs) like this um and then um but what's funny about the magello uh trophy cabinet is they have like um all their winners so they have like fangio nikki jody schecter um Vettel, mm-hmm. Raikkonen, yeah. and the last Ferrari world champ. Sorry, by the way, to everyone who was in- interested in music and hates Formula One. But <laughs> that after Kimi Raikkonen, there's just this like clear space yeah. in the trophy cabinet where mm-hmm. they were like, oh, oh we're going to win more. Oh. Of course we are. We're Ferrari. Yeah. Um, we're 21. We just got this uh, yeah, publishing just, deal. We got $60,000. Yeah. Everything's going to work out great. Um, I think that... Um, I think it's a really good move. I think it's. I think him at Mercedes was just it was getting boring. It was, <laughs> it for, was for everyone, right? Mm, yeah. And like after um, Abu Dhabi twenty twenty one, when like whether you're a fan of the sport or not, or whether you're a, f- uh, I'm not a Lewis Hamilton. Like I'm not like a team. I don't really have a team. Yeah. I just I just like good races. Yeah. Which is actually very. It's a really dumb sport to like if you like good racing. Yeah. Because Formula One doesn't yeah. really have. Most of them are boring. Yeah. Oh my god! You can fall asleep in the middle and that's, just watch the start and the end. Yeah. That's how I feel and about it. Because I've it. I've never seen one where I went. Oh wow! Well, yeah. Which one is this? Is this the one where you I go in a circle for four days? For non F one yeah. fans, that's pretty much what it is. This is NASCAR, yeah. right? This is what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. You and go he, left the whole time. <laughs> and I had it in my head this year that for, Singapore was a great race. And I watched it back and was like, this is fucking, <laughs> even this one is not That was great. one of the better ones yeah. this year too. Um, so I think that he, uh, it's anyone's guess if they've got, a, I think if you look at the e- eras of dominance mm-hmm. of cars, so you had, um, let's start with Schumacher and then it went from Schumacher to Seb Vettel yep. where he got uh, the four and then it just went Mercedes, 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 uh, you know, Rosberg and Hamilton. And now it's Red Bull. Yeah. So statistically, it should be Ferrari next. Yeah. But that doesn't mean anything. And if you've watched Ferrari in the last, uh, what, 15 years, it is, they're bad. They're, they're just not good at all. Stra- whether, it, like, Seb Beto had multiple opportunities to win championships, but they their strategy's bad. So I think who knows is the correct answer. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I am of a similar skin tone to Lewis Hamilton. 
and we both have a black parent and a white parent yep. and i know that red is not our color oh it just doesn't match <laughs> it doesn't. so people can say he's gonna look good in red but those black jumpsuits the mercedes ones are sick yeah they shoot mm. them they're they really good they're them. better than the silver ones yeah 100%. and the black car sorry um people who want to get on the whole uh race card about lewis hamilton making the car black etc etc yeah. the black car looks better no it definitely does it just does. It does. All right, good. That was, a, hey, that was a good question. That got welcome back to <laughs> F face to face F one F two F F one is the new <laughs> podcast we're doing where we talk about. I'm going to message Monkey Brown after this and ask if I can do a F one podcast. <laughs> yeah, I listened. I was enthralled. So yeah. I didn't know any of that, but I was like, "There's some yeah. there's deep lore here." Oh yeah, it's more the you wear the jumpsuits. Yeah. It's the same as loving football, except it's lamer. That's yeah. the thing. You can't argue that football's a better sport. More people like it because yeah. it's better. But it looks more interesting. Like you put it on yeah. and it's like... Rim, 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 and I'm like, wow, that was just them going left. This yeah. is incredible. Oh, you think F1 looks more interesting? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I no, think I think so. football's... Really? Aesthetically. I think to win. watch, definitely football's yeah. more mm. fun. Yeah. I, the drama with Formula One is what gets most people. And football is still like I know prices are mental, but like you can still like football and go to a game. You can't True. really go to an F one race yeah. unless you're an influencer. Yeah, no. yeah. I've never seen an F one car in person, but I have seen people kick a ball. Yeah, so I can relate more to that. Yeah. All um, right. So we'll, we'll. Are there any more F one? I'm quite excited if there <laughs> we'll are. We'll have to skip the next one because we're short in time and we'll talk are too we? much okay, about this. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. We'll we'll save that for the after. Is that's there a time yeah. limit on this? That's podcast? for the Patreon, everybody. Uh, no, no, we're, we're we're all good. We've we've got a lot of interesting stuff out of this. This is this is great. These questions okay. have been great this week. So another thing that we do is the previous week's guest leaves questions for you. So we have a little video from Olga Koch, who was our guest last week, and she's left three questions. We're going to hi, Josh Weller. This ah. is me, Olga, and I have three questions for you. Question number one: Who's your favorite movie sidekick or secondary character that you'd like to see in a spinoff of their own? Very Question difficult. number two: Why doesn't everybody just drive on the same side of the road? Would that not be really efficient? I just always get really scared when people drive Back their to cars F1. from <laughs> the UK to France, and it's like that must be an absolute nightmare. Why don't we just all drive on the same side of the road? And then the third question is: Can you explain to me why yogurt is tart, a little sour? Why frozen yogurt, classic flavor, is tart, it's a little sour, but flavored frozen yogurt has no tartness. Like a chocolate or a caramel frozen yogurt just tastes like chocolate or caramel, not sour caramel or sour <laughs> chocolate. Make it make sense. Hi! I, I was so confident about answering those and that, that third one's it, it throws a horrible, horrible question. Right, we'll, we'll go through them in order. So question number one was, who's your favorite movie sidekick or secondary character that you would like to see in a spinoff of their own? Um, okay, this is going deep on the nerd thing. Okay. Seven of Nine, Star Trek. From Star Trek, okay. I would like to see Star Trek, they've called it Star Trek Legacy. Oh, what the yeah. fans have, have titled it. This is, so this is essentially the show that the fans want. Yes. And okay. Paramount Plus, um, mm -hmm. who are just at the worst streaming service. No, no doubt. I no mean, doubt. Prime are doing a really good job of alienating mm -hmm. um, users, but they know <laughs> that people aren't going to cancel it because they want their... Yeah. GIF well, sometimes you search house. for stuff on Amazon. It's like, yeah, yeah we can, we can, yeah. you can buy it, and it's gonna cost you twenty five yeah. pounds for this movie with Steve Martin and Danny Glover from nineteen eighty two. Yeah, and you're like, okay, I'll get it. I look back at my uh, uh, Amazon movie purchases, and it's like, you know, the regret, like relationship regret, and you're like, I shouldn't have gone out with that person. That was that actually actually psychologically damaged me quite heavily, and I. <laughs> still feel like i'm making up for it now and taking it out on my current partner because i because i was too young to understand it's that still just so deep yeah inside. that's what i'm yeah, like yeah. fucking i why did i rent that i genuinely did rent that steve martin christmas rom-com the nora f1 i bought oh, it God. and it's a bad movie yeah I, I think i've done the same thing i think i've got kill bill volume two just purchased but it's, <laughs> in, but it's in 480p yeah and uh I, i've never watched it because for some reason, the Amazon Prime version doesn't have subtitles yeah. when it gets to the halfway point of the movie where she's getting taught Kung Fu. So there's no subtitles randomly. And I looked online and there was all these people posting, yeah, they need to fix that. And they were all from like 2011. <laughs> and I've got it in 2018. I paid for Die Hard. Well, Which is on every streaming service. Yeah, that's the one that will be there every year. But I also respect that every Christmas you're going to want to watch that. that yeah, makes sense. okay. Um, when am I going to want, want to watch Kill Bill Volume 2? Only if I've watched Kill Bill Volume 1, which I rogue, don't have. Yeah, it's, it's not the rogue. best Tarantino movie, is it? No, no. But you, you also have to watch it with the first one. It's very difficult yeah, to, to go to watch a movie and go, I'm going to go watch the first one for an hour and a half. I've been um, showing my mum 
all the Tarantino films. Oh yeah, because my mum is like a Hallmark Christmas Channel person. Yeah, like she loves bad. The films. kind of uh, what they've started doing specifically bad movies on Netflix now every Christmas yeah. featuring Lindsay Lohan. So mm-hmm. they did one where she gets amnesia, and they're filming one in Ireland at the moment. It's called Irish Wish, and it looks. Horrendous. Yeah, the storylines are, it's like, he's a prince who's forgotten about Christmas. Yeah. And she's Mrs. Claus. And you always think, will the name be inventive? Yeah. And the name is always the prince who couldn't remember and the woman <laughs> yeah. who was Mrs. Claus. That's the name of the movie. It's Christmas Eve and it's the one night Mrs. Claus can cheat on him. And it's called Mrs. Claus's Affairs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I would like to see, yeah, Seven of Nine. Uh, I just wanted more good Star Trek because season three of Picard was really good. Yeah, um, I've heard that that was kind of the. Do you one know what's that... interesting is uh, neither of you give a fuck. No, I I, I understand Picard <laughs> is kind of a. The first two seasons of that were like completely off the rails. They turned him into yeah. a robot, and oh, then season three. You, okay, I'm glad you know. Season that, three, yeah. they were like, let's bring back the actual other cast. But what I heard was the the original cast from the Next Generation wasn't in the first two seasons of Picard because Patrick Stewart was like, I don't want them. Yeah, this is my. I'm obsessed with. So I'm listening. I'd rather to, they not be. I'm here. listening to his audio book at the minute. Can oh, I God. play you? Yeah. So I really like. When when he talks about um, his uh, affairs or like people he's gone out with. No. Wasn't a mistake, but a case of a loving couple growing apart. However, I didn't feel the same about my three-year marriage to Wendy. <laughs> Still, I had cheated on my wife with a younger woman again, and there is no <laughs> getting around that. It's so good. <laughs> he's so, he's just so open in the book. Could you believe it? I'd fallen in love again <laughs> with a woman half my age. <laughs> Who could have it's seen like, this coming? Actually, I totally can. Yeah. That's the least surprising part yeah. of this book. It's so candid. We shouldn't have got engaged. Hey. Uh, <laughs> Star Trek, yes. yes. That's my thing. I okay. want more Terry Metallus Star Trek, please. We could we can we can uh, he, um, I he, mean we he, we can make that happen now, just so you know. He followed me on Instagram. Well the, look, of course. And that fucking that's the best I'm going to be interviewing you in two years' time. You're going to be in the new Star Trek, oh. and you're going to be talking about how comedy I didn't work doing out. Stand up in in a Star Trek costume, really? As well, I did it last week. Yeah, I did, I did 15 minutes, really, of Star Trek stand up. Oh, I was just I thought for a moment you just went on stage and didn't reference it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just went. Burk, burk. Sorry, yeah. it's time for me to go. Everyone, just press my little communicator. All right, that's a great that's a great answer for question one. Question two from Olga was, uh, why doesn't everybody just drive on the same side of the road? Uh, yeah, I mean, we drive on the, r- r- I mean, wrong side. Mm. Sorry, like, patriots. Let's, let's be honest here, yeah. But I don't think we should change it. No, it's it's now a cultural thing. You gotta, yeah. you gotta stick with it. But I think it's, um, uh, who else is, who's the other country that does the wrong side? Australia. Australia, Australia yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that... Just rebels. Are we the only two countries that drive on I, the... I think there's I think more. Ireland as well. Yeah. Does, does we were just like well our cars come from britain so we have to do whatever you say <laughs> sorry <about> um, that. <laughs> i i i looked it up i did look it up and so there was there was some quite intense answers that it was to do with uh in europe pope boniface the eighth boniface pope, pope boniface oh. b-o-n-i-f-a-c-e instructed pilgrims to keep to the left in the year 1300 and then later class distinction in france meant that aristocrats drove their carriages on the left side of the road forcing everybody else over to the center or the right-hand side. Uh, keeping to the right of the road was also seen as a way of defying the per- the Pope's decree. Is that what the Beyonce song's about? <laughs> <laughs> to the left, to the left, all of the decrees by Pope Beneface yeah. are left to the left. She's just a big fan of our roundabouts. <laughs> That's another thing as well. Some countries don't have roundabouts. Yeah. America uh, doesn't have roundabouts. So when you miss an exit, it's just like, well, you're just going. They must Somewhere feel like else. they're coming to like an elf land when they come here. <laughs> we have these lollipop ladies. We have yeah. little r- things where c- the cars just go round and round and round. Yeah. They, and they call their lollipop ladies crossing guards. That's too yeah, that's official. Too aggressive, isn't it? It's very aggressive. Yeah. Oh my, I'm going to bring my children over to the crossing guard. No, 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 no. Uh, they're going to be entered into a war by the crossing <laughs> guard. That's how it happens. Um, okay, and then the question number three was, can you explain to me why yogurt is tart, a little sour? I mean, I think it could be to do with flavors that I'm I have, is no, getting. No, I don't eat yo- yogurt. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think it could be to do with the flavors. I think maybe Olga is getting a, a specifically tart flavor. But yogurt Lemon. Is, is, a, is a waste of time. Mm-hmm. Okay, yogurt is, is a stupid... 
What the fuck is it? What is it? It's not like breakfast. I didn't know this was going to be the thing that just said <laughs> Who's eating yogurt? yogurt? <laughs> We would. Uh, this is probably a good time to uh, thank our sponsor, Dino. Yeah, 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 yeah. Makes yogurts. Yayo Valley. Um, <laughs> no, nope. yogurt is a stupid, cummy, gloopy, <laughs> thick. And here's the thing: it's the same thing with gin, which is like obviously, like I can understand whiskey yeah. tastes delicious. Yeah, yeah. Don't ruin it with Coke. But gin is horrible, so you have to put something so. in it. Yogurt is like on its own mm. is disgusting. So you have to hide the yogurt with other with granola, which well, isn't Froobs as well. Remember Froobs were like, oh, let's yeah. just change this. Let's put it in it, fruit in a tube. And it's not fruit, it's yogurt. It's a yeah. it's a yube. It's not a <laughs> <laughs> not a froob. Um, um, yeah, I think if you have to sneak things away and yeah. add o- extra parts that you dip in, like what is there any yogurt that you're like, okay, that's fine. No, they're all shit. All shit. Muller corners, fuck off. Just <laughs> I hate the thi- and you have to just why am I I'm, why am I doing the work? Like just I have to put the thing yeah. in. I'm glad to see you're doing that where you're holding it and you're tipping it in. I worked with someone who used to rip that off. Yeah, that's crazy. That's insane. And then Don't you, do and that. And then there's never enough of the crunchy bits, which are the only good bits. <laughs> they are definitely. And also, crunch ice cream sucks as well. Ice I'm just cream. Say that I think ice cream is. There's come on now. Silly. This is this is insane. It's silly. It's it's a silly. And it, it it drips and it your hands sticky afterwards. Uh-huh. Or you get a tub of Hagen dazs and you can't not eat the whole thing. Like I, you well, can't, now it says like you love ice cream. I can't, yeah, because it's <laughs> like don't like um, donuts as well. I can't because mm-hmm. the day's done. Yeah, if you eat a donut at any point, that's it. You can't do anything. It's just for so, nine it's hours. So much sugar yeah. all at once. Okay, well that's a, that's a good answer. That, that that was that was three very good answers uh, to those, and we got we got a lot of energy out of those. <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, is it is it maybe you don't like any food that you can't eat while driving a Formula One car? <laughs> so yogurt, really ice cream. It's, um, I have IBS as well. I should probably oh, should have said that. Of course. That. Well, that now it makes sense. So also, secret villain. it does make me shitting in my pants. Yeah, like I I only like ice cream and yogurt because it's just fun. It's just fun, and then I'm psyched up. There's no downside where. You know, I'm on the toilet going, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> and I feel like the toilet's always the time to think about that. Uh, fantastic. So we've got we've got through those three questions from Olga. Thank you, Olga. You will you will uh, eventually be leaving some questions for our guests next, next week, which is a lot of fun. Great. Uh, come to kind of the end of the show. We'd love if you have any plugs, anything you'd like to plug your current shows or tours or anything you'd like people to check out online. Please uh, send it right down the camera. Tell people. I've got nothing. You've got nothing? No, I've got nothing. <laughs> We need we need to figure this out with comedians better because every people go I don't know I mean obviously social media yeah follow, I mean follow me on Instagram um, don't follow me on Twitter I don't use it anymore okay uh, you can follow me on TikTok but it's on just Threads uh, no no on threads. I don't think anyone's on Threads I, mean, I think you it. could admit to murder on Threads and no one would <laughs> no I one's think you'd on find it. a nice little group of other people <laughs> yeah. are like yeah me me murder too and also do you hate ice cream <laughs> let's just um, be pals yeah just Instagram. Um, you can follow me on TikTok, but it's the same. They're the same. Whichever one you use, it's mm-hmm. the same content. Um, and then uh, I've just, I don't know, this gig, just come to a show. Shows to touring it. around, obviously. Oh, yeah. You'll be, uh, I'm sure, back with us soon at Monkey Brawl Comedy. Well, if you enjoyed today's uh, episode, please, you can help us out by uh, leaving a review for the podcast or sharing it, liking it, subscribing, all those things. Uh, please, obviously, check out uh, Josh Weller on all the social medias oh, except and the podcast and, and the, the podcast. Formula One podcast Formula One podcast that's coming soon <laughs> if you'd like to see more of me I host Monkey Barrel Comedy Show every Saturday 5pm at Monkey Barrel Comedy you can also see me every Sunday to Thursday at 10.30pm on twitch.tv forward slash Fox Comedy uh, thanks for being here thank you Ewan for being our wonderful our wonderful tech My and pleasure. we'll see you we'll see you again next week for more Formula One and Yogurt Hate that right was a, here that was a much better plug than what yeah. I did <laughs> <laughs> right here on Monkey Barrel Comedy Chat Show. See you soon.